What's up, Raf gang? It's Raf in the Raf cave. Welcome back to another video. This here is a, a video of a bunch of clips of what I'm doing to my system to calibrate it. Um, if you guys don't know, Mini DSP has what's called a U-Mic 1, and it is an amazing microphone because what it can do is it can you can see what your speakers are doing in your room. So sometimes rooms aren't perfect, right? You got obstacles, you got shapes of rooms, ceilings, all these things, and you're able to see it in a graph from free software called REW. It's free. And then with this microphone plugged in your computer, you can do test tones on your speakers and see what they're doing, and that way you can correct them. You can correct them with crossovers, you can correct them with time aligning, you can correct them with delays, correct them with volume levels and make sure they're all matched. Lots of cool things. Um, this microphone here um, is really great. Tells you where, what your speakers are doing and that way you can correct them with the software. So it's a very accurate mic and it's a great uh, DSP uh, or SPL meter as well. It tells you that your speakers are all playing nicely together, right? So it's awesome. Gotta have this. Um, so it's also important if you really want to dial in your subwoofers, that's a whole other thing, right? Subwoofers are very important. Very important. I have seven subwoofers in my system, so in order to calibrate them correctly, you're going to want to get a Mini DSP 2x4 HD. Now, this allows me to specifically correct and make sure all my subwoofers are playing in harmony together, so it's a beautiful thing. Um, so in summary, guys, I'm just going to show you a bunch of clips of videos I'm making, but kind of just saying quickly that you want to set your gains. Now, the gain is your, your volume control in the back of your subwoofer. Uh, what's really great about this technique is when you put the subwoofer in one location in your room, put the microphone in your main listening position, and you want to set those subs to, say, 75, 76, 77, whatever it is, right? Set it at that level. Then you take your second subwoofer, put it in the same spot, and move that gain until it gets to 75, 76, 77, right? You do that with all your subs. Now, if they're different, if they're the same subs, you only do it once. You just mimic the same gain. But if it's multiple subs, that's even better. Put that sub in the same position, set the gain. That's your gain matching. So all the subs are the same power output, right? That's important. And then you put your subwoofers in their main main spots, and then you level match. Level match is when you put your microphone in your, cal in your spot, and then you move the volume of your receiver or the mini DSP and make sure that volume is the same on all the subwoofers at your main listening position. So that's level matching. So gain matched, boom. Level matching, boom. Then you get into time aligning, delay, phase then that way your subs are playing nicely so basically your front speakers are doing the the audio wave like this you want your your bass to catch that wave you know and, and play nicely at the same time right you don't want your your subwoofers interfering with that wave and it causes nulls and it causes you know sound dropouts and all that stuff that's no good so that's what's great about the microphone is you're able to see what's going on set the dial and then it's playing nicely and get that nice straight line you want to get that nice Nice curve for your bass, which is good. And then you can get into your other speakers. All your other speakers in your room, you can measure the, the crossover settings and make sure that those wavelengths are nice and smooth as well. So when you have your bass that starts up here and then drops down, you want your speakers to start right at that dropping down spot and kind of continue on. So it's a nice flat line. So that's really great too. Um, and then with the Mini DSP-1, you got four outputs up to four different subwoofers, and you can sp specify each sub to do their own thing. Set the delays, set the volume, so everything's playing nicely together. So in all, when it's all done for me, I get a nice house curve. I got nice volume of all my speakers playing nicely together, all in phase correctly with all the speakers. Crossovers are set nicely. It's a beautiful thing. So highly recommend looking into it. Mini DSP U Mic 1 and then H, uh, the 2x4 HD. Definitely look into it, guys, if you're serious about home theater and your theater to make sure you're getting the most performance out of your system. I'll leave links in the description below if you want to pick up from Amazon. It's a non-cost to you. It helps me out if you want to choose my link to buy. I appreciate it. Uh, otherwise, guys, well, enjoy the video. It's just a bunch of videos and showing what I'm doing. Uh, it's not very perfect. It's not a step-by-step -step thing. It's just kind of an overview showing you what I did to get my system all set up. So it's awesome. It sounds amazing. Even with sealed and ported subs, they're playing nicely, and it's great. Sounds great. Love it. Anyway, guys. Let's watch this video and uh, thanks for watching. Hey guys, what's up? Uh, this is the video I'm showing you guys that I'm gonna configure my subs to my room. Uh, first thing I'm doing is I'm gain matching all my subs to one location. 
Uh, I picked this particular spot here because it's the easiest way I can gain match each of my subs in one location in my room. I'm starting with the SPL 150 on the bottom. And this is a REW with Mini DSP. Right now, I am gonna level it right about 80. Right about 80. Well, I'll try to get 80. And then what I'll do is I'll unplug this one and I'll plug in the RSW15 and I'll do the same thing. Same test tone and match it up to about 78, 79, 80. And after that I'll unplug that one and then I'll plug my near field sub there and then I'll gain match that one to reach, to, to reach right about 80. That's what, that's what gain matching is. So you have multiple subwoofers in your room, put it in one location and set the dial in the back of the amp to match all subs at the same uh, uh, power output. Alright, I'm going to do that now. Alright guys, so I have the new sub on the bottom, the 150, gain matched at about one fourth volume, and then the RSW15 at a little over one fourth volume, and then I just duplicated the gain on both of those subs for the right side, and then we set up the uh, sub 12, that was set to one fourth volume as well, and then you just match it up with the same sub here, one fourth gain. And then the same thing on the last one, one fourth gain there. So all subs are outputting the same power at that location to the main listening position. So once that's all set, all the gain knobs in the back are good. So you know exactly where they're supposed to be all the time. And now with the software, left 15 tower, right 15 tower, back 12, and the back 12s. And they're all set for the out, uh, input uh, input one input. So on, on the mini DSP, one subwoofer in from the back of the Marantz, one sub out, sub one out, in two sub in here, and then I have all four sub ports going out, right? So left side, right side, back sub, and then this one's got a, a splitter to these two subs. So that's all my subs are configured now throughout my theater. And then on the mini DSP, that's where I renamed it. Left side, right side, back, and that. So. I'm all set there. So now the gain is done. Now it's time to level match them. And that's when you go to the outputs. And then you can set the, the, the gain volume of each subs to match the same decibel at the main listening position. All right, so that's next. And then, of course, you can go into the, um, the delay and stuff like that and invert. You know all that stuff it's crazy let's get it now we're doing level matching so with the left side of my subs we're gonna unmute that and that's reading 80.9 and then I unmute my right side and if you need to bump it up a little bit you just do one tick like that. And then on the back sub 12, that's looking good. And on the back two 12s together, see? So all you gotta do is you can reduce or gain the, the level here in the mini DSP of each set of subs here to match the same dB output across the board at that main listening position right there. So all these subs now are giving me the exact same output at the main listening position. That's what's really neat about the Mini DSP, full control of each output. 
All right, now I'm moving on to the delay. All right, guys, I'm going to talk to you about a really good app that I use on my phone. It's called Frequency Generator, and this is where you can set um, a, a single uh, sin wave. And I chose 50 hertz because that's kind of above the tuning point of the port and stuff. Um, so I have that going right into my uh, front of my Marantz here, and I just play the test tone, and that's always sending a, a nice a nice wave to the speakers. Um, and also recommend turning off your speakers if you can, or unplug the wires, because you don't want your front speakers going at all. You just want your subwoofers going, so it doesn't inter interfere with the, the readings. Um, so that's what I did. Frequency generator, 50 hertz, into your receiver, just the subwoofer outputs, and that's a really good... Uh, tone to, to tune um, your, your subs on and not just straight pink noise. I mean, pink noise works, but it's nice having a good, good clean frequency. So that's what I used uh, to get the ten test tones out to my subs. All right, guys. So we are now going to measure the room, uh, the REW software for the, for the le uh, left side of the subs. So what you want to do is um, open up REW, you go into the measurement, which is uh, this right here, and you get this pop-up here, and you want to make sure that uh, you name name the, 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 the meter, name the reading you're going to do. And I go from uh, 10 hertz to 100 hertz. And then uh, you run a check levels, make sure it's okay, it said good. And now I'm going to run a sweep and see what we get. Okay, so I'm going to tap that button there. All right, so there's our graph. This is what we're getting here for the left side of the room. And what you want to do is just raise the delay. On the mini DSP by one. Or I just typed in one. Just go one and then run another measurement. And I'm going to put one delay. And it looks Looks like we gained a little bit around uh, 12 hertz. So we'll try it again. at two. Looks like nothing really changes. It's just at the very bottom end, it goes up a little. So what you're trying to do is get the, the best response of the delaying by raising it or decreasing it until you get a better, the best response you can get. All right, guys, so going back and forth, try and invert it and invert and then adjusting the delays of my front subs not the back subs they're at zero but the front subs here i ended up with this this is about as flat as i can get it for a response so 
after getting the, the flattest response, try to get rid of the big dips and peaks and stuff, keep it at somewhat decent level, then run Odyssey. So I'm going to do that now, run Odyssey in the eight positions, because the mini DSP is going to control the base, but we just got to get a signal to it. All right. That's good. All right, guys. So after you run Odyssey, everything's looking good there. But I just wanted to show you guys something about REW that uh, will help you guys figure out the best crossover settings for your surround. Um, so for what I did, as I just um, uh, when you go to preferences, you got to make sure your driver is uh, ASIO and you have the ASIO for, for all downloaded. And then you can choose your surround channels here. Um, so what I did was I measured 80, 90 Hertz, 100 Hertz, 110 Hertz, 120 Hertz. And as you can see, look at 80, you know, everybody says, just pick everything at 80 and you're good to go. Well, not really, not in my room. You see 80 gives you the biggest suck out at a hundred, right? That's no good. So if you raise it up to like 90, Look at that, from 80 to 90, I gained that much more dBs, and it became flatter. Then you go to 100, it looks even better. And then 110 is the best for my room. See that? So from going to 80, that everybody says is the best holy grail setting, moving it up to 110 gives you a flatter response. So not every room is, is the perfect, and every room is different, so, but for, for the RAF cave, 110 for my surround sound crossover gives me the flattest response. Pretty cool stuff. That's why you, you mic one and REW can really tell you what's going on in your room. And just by changing crossover levels for the surround, that really helped helped a lot. So I did this for the center channel, and I did this for my surround back channels as well. And of course the fronts. Um, so as you can see now, these are my crossovers for uh, my speakers in the RAF cave. The fronts are at 90. Center is at 80, 120 for surround, 110 for surround back. And since you can't really measure the top front or top rear, I'm just going to put those higher. That's I'm just guessing on that, but that's what I'm going to do. Anyway, guys, that's a, uh, you know, that's what I'm doing now. It's just trial and error and keep trying and look at other videos and calculate delays Figure out the delay for 60 hertz, 80 hertz, 90 hertz for your fronts. Add it to your DSP. You add your delays down here for all my subs. And then, of course, the uh, gain matching and level matching is already set for all my subs to work in harmony at the main listening position. And now I have the best delay for every uh, every sub configuration I have now. It's really great. And that's good stuff. And this is my final house curve for the raft cave. This is what I have measured and tweaked and prodded and poked around with and changed crossovers. This is what I'm settling on here. And uh, yeah, just gonna kind of go from there. All right, guys, another awesome feature that I was very excited about with the uh, mini DSP is the different configurations, right? So configure one is the one I've been working on mostly to get that nice, um, you know, house curve, get it nice and equalized and balanced out. But sometimes when you balance out the bass and it's all working in harmony and you're watching a movie or listening to music, you just don't have enough oomph, right, in the bass. You want to bump it up, which normal people do. I mean, more, mostly people will bump up their subwoofer a lot, right? So what's great about that with this is you can say, like my config too. So Right here is a flat zero, zero dB, right? Or zero balance. There's no upping or down, um, increasing or decreasing the, the base volume. But if I go to config two, what I did was I bo boosted it three decibels, three dB. So that boosts the base three times there. And if, uh, you know, still not getting that oomph in the base, we're going to config three and that bumps it up by six. So if you really want to push the base, you're going up by six. But of course, it's kind of difficult to go into your computer and have to choose this when you're watching a movie or listen to music. So I have my Harmony remote. And uh, what I did is I programmed 
mini DSP AV switch. Very easy. Just look up the model number on the uh, Logitech. Click that. And now I have the preset one, two, three, or four. And I'm not really using four at the moment. So if I wanted to go, hey, I want a little more bass. And I go to conf preset two. I go to my mini DSP and I send a signal. And now I run config two. And if I need a little less bass, I'm going to go to config one. Boom. Zero. See? That's really awesome. So if you have a Harmony remote, it's amazing. Inference sensors right here. But hey, what if I'm in my theater and I want to point the remote at my sensor down there below the center speaker? That's when you get the, the flasher. And I just happen to have an extra one here. You get these little little flashers here, right? So what I'll do is I'll stick I'll stick one of these guys right there. And then I can control the mini DSP from my theater room. So that's awesome. It works out great. Can't wait. I'm going to put everything back where it's supposed to go. I got things all over the place. I've been, I've been trying to get this thing done. But yeah, wires everywhere. HDMI cables everywhere. Calibration microphones. You mic calibration microphones all over the place. It's been a long night. But I got it all dialed in with the Mini DSP. All my subwoofers are working in harmony. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven subwoofers sounding beautifully. Let me tell you guys, sealed and ported play together in harmony for me. And what's an added bonus is I get that extra 4D effect with all the, the air coming out of that bottom port slit there, fills the room with that nice air with those bass scenes. It is spectacular and very cool. I love it. So yeah, definitely recommend it, guys. You mic one. Rev software. REW and the mini DSP to configure your subwoofers the way you want them to in your room. It's awesome. Highly recommend it. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Home Theater Rules. Raph out. See ya.